So this came about because of it, I guess I should say it should have came up because of at least some extra information in the market. Right? The sellers knew what they were selling, but the buyers don't. Now keep in mind, this is distinct from just it being a mystery, like a lottery, right? If nobody knew what quality they were buying or selling, if the sellers also didn't know, then the same problem would not have popped up, right? It's the fact that the sellers do know and the buyers don't. The sellers could take advantage of the situation. The buyers know the sellers could take advantage of the situation. And that's what leads to the problem. Right, the asymmetry of the information. So the problem here is not that there's low quality merchandise. There's nothing necessarily wrong with low quality merchandise. Sometimes we don't necessarily value the high quality enough to, for it to be worth making. But the problem is that the low quality stuff can masquerade as high quality stuff. That's the real problem. And when this can happen, if nobody can tell the difference between high quality and low quality, why would you bother trying to sell high quality? Because you might as well, I mean, even if you think that it's a good idea to try to sell high quality stuff, you might as well just offer low quality stuff and claim it's high quality. If nobody can tell the difference, then you're going to make way more money selling cheap stuff for high prices than selling good stuff for high prices, right? So why bother selling the high quality stuff when you can just sell low quality stuff and say that it's high quality instead? If we think about the Nash equilibrium in the game that we just played, offering an actual honest high quality good is clearly not the Nash equilibrium. Because imagine what happens. Imagine you sell, you offer a high quality good, right? You go to your buyer and you say, hey, this is a high quality good. They believe you. You agree on a price. The sale is done, right? You would have made more money if, in fact, you had been selling them a low quality good, right? Because what would that have changed about the arrangement? Nothing, right? You never proved to them that you had a high quality good. They just believed you. Uh, so the same interaction would have happened the exact same way if you had, in fact, had a low quality good in your pocket and you would have made more money. So actually offering a high quality good is not the best response here. It's always the best response to offer a low quality good, at least until you create like repeated interaction reputation. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's like a one-time sale. Yes. Right? Yeah, so, the, then, so the, for this thing, to, for the low quality thing, it sort of depends on there not being like reputation and stuff like that. There's one way to fix this problem that we will talk about. So when there's not perfect information available, people have to start making decisions that are risky or rely on strategic decision. Uh, and the strategic decision thing really comes into play when we have asymmetric information. Because you have to think, this person knows something that I don't. What is it that they don't know? And what would they choose to do in all these different scenarios? So we can use some of the tools of game theory to figure out how we can deal with the fact that other people know things that we don't know. This can also lead to some real problems for markets, right? Like I said, it's really hard to justify selling an actual high quality good if nobody can tell the difference that you make more money with a low quality, right? Which is bad. It means that you can't sell high quality goods and that feels like a bad thing, right? So that's gonna be a problem. How can we fix the information problem, right? There's a problem here that needs to be fixed. Otherwise the market itself might fall apart. So this all came about uh, with what's called the market for lemon, it's sort of a general name for this kind of problem. Uh, the market, the product, I promise I'm good to give a version of what's presented in the George Akalov paper, The Market for Lemons, which came out in the 1970s. Uh, and he was talking about the uh, used car market, which at least at the time was known as a very shady market. Not so much anymore because they implemented some of the things that we're going to talk about in the fixes section when we get to there. Uh, but at the time, very shady market, sort of, you know, you would mention used car salesmen uh, in the sort of same breath as other professions okay. known for lying. Right? There's a sort of a list of joke professions that you, you know, you see, oh, they're lying like this, right? They're lying like that, lying like a used car salesman. It was a very physically incredible expression at the time, right? What you expect. So his question was, you know, we sort of anticipate this very bad behavior by used car salesmen in the 70s. Uh, why? Why, why, it, why isn't there just higher quality here? Why, why is it so difficult to buy a high quality used car? Even if you're willing to pay the money for a high quality used car, you'd have a hard time finding one. Why is that? And his answer was that because it's very difficult to verify the quality of these used cars, in equilibrium, suppliers won't offer it. Same deal as what we just did, right? In our game, you can decide whether to sell high quality or low quality merchandise. A used car seller could decide to source high quality or low quality used cars. And then, of course, they would sell all the cars as high quality. Uh, and then, you know, and then they would realize, why would I ever actually buy a high quality used car? And at that point, there's no more high quality used cars left to sell. So 
So the lemon pro, oh, sorry, I should say, uh, the reason it's called the market for lemons, if you're not aware, lemon is a term for a bad car, basically. Uh, the lemon problem is a general problem in the economics of information that pops up everywhere, not just used cars. Sort of like in the prisoner's dilemma case, we're talking about used cars here, but this problem has actually really been solved in the used car market, but it still pops up a lot of other places, right? So it's, it's a general illustration of a problem that's much broader. So if you have consumers and producers without perfect information, they have to make choices based on the information that they do have. So they need to have develop some way of telling these things apart. Otherwise, the market's going to fall apart. If you still can't tell the difference between a high quality and a used, uh, low quality used car, no one's going to bother selling you a high quality. So there has to you have to figure out some way of keeping these things uh, separate, or the market's just going to cease to exist. Right? No one's going to bother actually selling you a high quality used car uh, they, if they can't you know convince you that it's high quality. We can phrase this as sort of a game as well. Say there's a thousand people who value a high quality car at ten thousand dollars, but a low quality car at only two thousand dollars, and they can't tell whether the high car is high quality or low quality just by looking. They have no way of verifying the quality. You have five hundred sellers who will make high quality cars, which cost seven thousand dollars a piece to make, so they're more than pretty expensive to make. But they still, you know, there's a big gap there. It's like there's a three thousand dollar gap between the value of the car and what it costs to make. So some, some real efficiency value to be had. There's also 500 sellers who are making low quality used cars that are much cheaper to make, they only cost a thousand. But again, there's a benefit to be had. There's a whole thousand dollar gap between the value and the marginal cost. So, in an ideal world, right, if we just could look at these cars and know as buyers whether they're high quality or low quality, this would be totally fine. No problems whatsoever. The price for a high quality car ends up somewhere between 7,000 and 10,000. The price for a low quality used car ends up between 1,000 and 2,000. Everybody's happy. Some people get high quality cars that they really value more than they pay for them. Some people get low quality cars that they value more than they pay for them. Everything's good. But what would we, do we think would actually happen because of the fact that we can't distinguish the quality of cars? Going into this market, you can't tell the difference between high quality and low quality cars, but you probably have an inkling that there are some people out there who are lying. Right? You might not know who's lying, but you know someone's gonna be lying, right? So if you go to a car dealership, and you see that the car is marked as being high quality, you think, you know what, there is some chance that they're lying about this. I don't know if they're the 50% that are honest or the 50% that are lying to me, but I know there's some chance. So I go into it thinking, okay, there's a half chance that I'm being lied to. And then I ask myself, what am I willing to pay for this car? Okay. Given that there's a half chance that I'm being lied to, well, there's no way I'm gonna pay $7,000, right? Because if I value the high quality car at 10,000 and I value the low quality car at 2,000 and I'm getting one half the time, well, the average of that is 6,000, right? So I might only be willing to pay $6,000 to roll the dice on maybe getting a good car, maybe getting a bad car, at most, right? So think about what's gonna happen there. Uh, so if I'm only willing to pay $6,000, which even then would be optimistic to half the time get a car I value at $10,000 and half the time get one that I value at $2,000, right? That's not enough to cover the cost of making the good car. Right? So you have 50% honest sellers out there, but people are not going to be willing to offer them enough to make this sell the high quality good actually work what? Right? They're going to lose money selling the high quality good because they can't actually sell it for what it's worth. They can only sell it for what it's worth, given the fact that you might end up with a bad car anyway. Right? So you walk to the dealership, you know there's some chance that you're about to get taken for a ride. So you're not willing to offer the full amount that you actually value the good car at because you know there's a chance you're going to get, get duped. Uh, and the amount that you end up being willing to offer is likely going to be less than the cost of production of the high quality car. Any guesses what's going to happen next? We're in a situation where consumers are not willing to pay the marginal cost of the high quality cars. They start making low quality cars. You can't make a high quality car and make money out of it anymore, right? All the high quality sellers are going to go away. They're either going to start making low quality cars or they're just going to disappear from the market entirely. So high quality sellers can't make any money because the, the sort of risk adjusted price is not enough to cover their costs. So they're going to leave frustrated with the market, unable to sell an actual high quality car, which means that the only remaining sellers are now low quality, right? The only sellers who are willing to stay in the market are the low quality sellers. 
which actually sort of comes back to bite them because what's going to happen? Well, now that all the cars in the market are low quality, everyone knows that you can go to a car lot. They'll say, yeah, this is all high quality. And you're just like, yeah, sure, high quality. I know it's low quality. All the cars are low quality. There's no fool in me. I'm only going to offer you 2,000 bucks. That's why I value a low quality car, right? So you wouldn't be willing to pay, and you wouldn't even have in your mind the possibility that it's actually a high quality car. Uh, and so you're only, the whole the entire market is low quality purchases, which answers the question, why is it so hard to buy a high quality used car? Because of this risk of getting a low quality used car makes it not so worthwhile to actually sell a high quality. So the Nash equilibrium in this case is that all the cars are low quality and that the price is somewhere between $1,000 and $2,000. Which, by the way, if we had been in a perfect world, right, the price for these low quality cars would have also been between one and two thousand dollars, right? So the low quality sellers didn't actually get anything out of this whole scenario. They got the exact same price that they would have if everybody had been honest in the first place. So nobody wins in this scenario. The high quality sellers lose because they get pushed out of the market. The buyers lose because they no longer have the option to buy a high quality car. And the low quality sellers don't really get anything. They're just as well off as they were before. Maybe briefly they got some extra money because they were able to master it's high quality, but now nobody believes and it doesn't matter. So everybody loses. 